एक्स्ट्रा टाइम In 1968, I watched the, uh, um, the Mexico Olympics, and I was just uh, so inspired. I watched a little black and white TV in my parents' um, kitchen uh, back in England, and uh, I just I knew that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be in the Olympics. And um, shortly thereafter, I was diagnosed with spina bifida and told not to play sports. And I'm the kind of person that um, if you tell me I can't do something, there's more reason to do it. And uh, so throughout the 70s, maybe when a teenager, I started training and, uh, and it got better and better. And by the time I was uh, 17, I had my first international, the javelin thrower. I was number two in the world, but and as a junior when I was 19, so 83 meters. And uh, that set me on my path. I got a scholarship to the States and uh, be able to, you know, compete in 84 and 88 Olympics. I was a world record holder. I've lost count of how many British records I have, a Commonwealth record, world record holder. Over the next decade, uh, I, I took over as executive director I was Olympians uh, last year when I was on CNN uh, on our 10th anniversary we had 29 which is pretty good um, but it's not good enough for me and so last year I've doubled it when I was 60 uh, I let the Olympic Museum the Culture and Heritage Foundation you know, know about what I'm doing and the kind of ideas I had I met with them back in uh, over this year and you know, they really embraced the idea and uh, wanted to have me as, as part of, on the commission to, to uh, um, my ideas and kind of, um, you know, move forward as far as how to connect sport and arts. Somehow the name Picasso got attached as like an artist, and that just got uh, you know got picked up initially by the BBC, and then everyone else was kind of picked up on it. And to me, it's I guess that's fine. I mean, people can remember it, so it doesn't hurt. Um, and again, it just uh, it's the first time it was in print was in 2006, about 10, 11 years ago. And after that, it just got picked up by more and more people. And it's kind of built, you know, um, it's just become very recognised. Uh, so. I guess I can't complain about it. It's so in sync with, with what I'm working on, um, with, with sport and with art and competition, and also you know, bringing about, you know, creating a platform for peace. Uh, so to me, I, I kind of jumped to the chance, I always wanted to come to India. And again, you know, I look at it as, you know, Sport and art are very uh, connected, believe it or not. And it only took me, you know, till the last five, ten years to see that connection. And I look at it as, you know, sport being a very physical way of expressing yourself. And, you know, it's about being active and about, um, you know, doing things. Um, so again, I look at that expressions uh, 2017 being a great uh, concept. I think that could really start a movement, a global movement. My guess and what, what I would say is just um, maybe they need to work on the infrastructure as far as you know, the athlete support and again, I, I don't know the details of that so um, and, and part of this is exactly that, finding out about within the IOC and kind of just how organisations function, uh, this is all kind of new to me, you know, uh, my background is as an athlete, as a coach, as an artist, uh, at the same time I'm embracing this as um, finding out how things work and how organizations work and how organizations interact with one another 
So maybe in, you know, ask me that in a year or five years from now, I can I can give you a really good answer.